Be careful off tonight, he's not overplaying his hand. So, Jamie Saad will kick off to the north. It's a nice night at Parramatta as we start round 13. To the halfway mark of the competition, we draw closer. And Tim Manor it is, who brings it away. 13 metres out from his line. And we play the ball and play it back to young Titi. He and Hayne miss the match against the Dragons in round eight. Just outside the 20 metre line, it's with Lasalo. Now for more and more to take it up, and he's met by the brick wall, the red and white brick wall, including Young and Dan Hunt and Michael Wayman. And Parramatta then through Robson, turning it back for his lock forward, Ben Smith. Parramatta's half 5 8 combination tonight unchanged with Maguire out at 5 8 and Robson at half. That is Manor again with his second carry on the opening set. And Robson it is that puts it down the ground and looking for some vacant space. He did pretty well. Nightingale came across from the right side and Nightingale is held on the 20 metre line down the Dragons end. And not a bad opening set there from Parramatta. A bit of variation from the kickoff instead of hitting full three moi moi straight. Swung a couple of passes wide. The Dragons now just inside their own 30 second tackle. Tongave it is that plays the ball down in his second game for the Dragons. And uh, there they are on the wide shot, approaching the 40 metre line. And Ben Cuthbertson crosses the red line. He'll play the ball, Adam. As we get down low with the ground cameras and then to Sowell as he reefs it down the ground. Jordan Atkins goes back to join Jared Hayne. Hayne stays away and lets Atkins take control of it. And the left side, St George defence, quick down there. Ben Cray and Matt Pryor tonight. Pryor playing centres. Oh, Robson lost that completely. And he gave it to Burt, and it didn't really help Luke Burt. He was already under immense pressure. And so he plays the ball, Burt, and the ball goes away to Loco. The centre combination, Peter mentioned, inexperienced. They've got 11 NRL matches between them. So they're out near the 30 metre line, and Tamila Lasalo again with a carry, and that's a good dart from Dummy Half by Keaton. He's out to the 40 on five. The kick comes from Hayne. And he kicked from just outside the 40. It's gone down to Tongave. He's watching it. He's praying to it. He's asking it to go over. And eventually it does. It touches the chalk. But it was touch and go for Penny Tongave as he watches it. Have a look at this. And did he touch it? Did he touch it? He touched that, perhaps. And did it touch the chalk? I don't think so. I don't think it got to the jaw. Well, he's come up with the best con job ever there, Penny. <laughs> he's got everyone for he's, world most champion. he's a world champion poker player. <laughs> Here it is again. It's interesting. Well, did he get a finger on it? I think he did. And did it reach the chalk? And the touch judge waved his flag, agreeing with Tongvay. I think he took Tongvay's word for it. Played by Cuthbertson, and it's gone to Hornby. That was forward to Craig. Well, called by the touch judge. That's if he called it, but it would be the one. same touch judge that said that ball went dead. You know why? Because Penny Tongave said it went dead. That's a very rare error there from Ben Hornby. He's throwing it forward to Ben Cray on his outside. Miscommunication. Eels now, 40 metres out, centre field. Good attacking option here. Jared Hayne just down with some repairs to his boots. We'll talk about the conditions in a minute, minute Joey, after this scrum and the tackling set goes, but not that easy out there tonight. No, very dewy, heavy dew on the surfaces. Loco gets on the outside of Soward. He also gets uh, very close to that sideline under the tackle of Nightingale, who we know his upper body strength is enormous. Now Maguire. But just outside the 30 metre line, Parramatta with a good attacking opportunity. Robson behind Moy Moy. Hayne came in, Smith with the ball. And they're 22 metres out down the centre corridor against the Premiership favourites and front runners. Moy Moy goes head on into Dan Hunt. And Wayman comes in to help. The other prop forward now goes to Robson. He puts a ball on the ground. Tongavay looks at this one and says, Thank God for that. He's coming, Jerry. Yeah. So they're rushing it back. Stephen Kearney watches on, knowing that his adversary tonight is still.
Stephen Price, really, not Wayne Bennett, but of course they were together when the Kiwis won their first World Cup. If you're going to beat the Dragons, you've got to get that right. That was an easy kick. He was under very little pressure there, Jeff Robson, and the worst thing you can do is put it dead. And that just took, takes all the pressure off. You can't beat the Dragons in those kind of plays. Here's Hunt with the ball. He's on the wrap for this kid. I really am. Dan Hunt, he, he is an absolute toy. He had an injury riddled last year. And people seem to forget that not only were they are they missing Jeremy Smith this year, but they didn't have Dan Hunt last year. So he really has made up in many ways for Jeremy Smith. Bo Scott with the ball now, playing right side second row. And the Gaznia was a dummy half. And he gets the ball back for Soward, who's always got a mile of time. Brought about mainly through the fact that he's able to stand so deep. And here's Atkins in a, in a bit of trouble. And the Dragons are going to... No. Relax. One on one, knock forward. He's cleared knock forward, I think. And there's a couple of players hurt. Atkins is not well, but Cuthbertson is 16. That's him on his haunches. And most importantly, I presume that he's saying that there's a Dragons knock on. You've ripped it out, mate. It's soft. You've got to hold the ball. It doesn't matter which way you're facing. This, this is Atkins, ball. the five, Jamie. taken by Soward. He's called Soward for raking the ball. Yep. And uh, that's that's a Dragons knock on called by, by Klein. There's no doubt about it, it was a deliberate act by Soward. Even if it was a loose carry, the ball has travelled forward. Knock on, to me, seems correct. Jordan Atkins, he got his, got his head in an awkward position there. As Adam Cuthbertson coming to tackle him, he got really scrunched up underneath the tackle. It's a new word, Andrew. You're sitting in a very, very big seat there, the, the, the seat vacated by by the goose man yeah, scrunching. scrunching I like that that's what young girls can wear around their hair too scrunchies wasn't there a toilet paper where you either scrunched it or you folded it wasn't that part of the ad that might have come from that so here's the scrum just Wait outside there. the 10 metre line power not into the ground imagine tonight Find him both. sitting Free between these there. two great number sevens of times gone by Sterling and Johns and Peter was talking about that's an awful end of that six from Parramatta a few minutes ago. And you're in the middle of, the, of these two guys. You're not going to get involved, are you? 30 metres out from their own line, Parramatta, and played over there. And it comes across the field. The Watson and Hayne comes in, and Pryor is waiting for him. And Pryor it is that puts Hayne down. Well, he's certainly not overplaying his run. Oh, it's a but it's a penalty. They weren't back for 10. The men in red and white, and Dan Hunt is the major offender. Maybe the lone offender. Robson, that was the, the high shot, depicting what the referee saw. And the tap, another chance for Parramatta. Keating taking the free kick. Robson, Moi Moi, Moi Moi to Hayne! Just for a moment, I thought he had broken them. He's, he's going to play at 11 metres out. And he complains about a second tackle. Moi Moi takes it ahead. And he's about five metres out from the line. The Dragons then resetting their defensive line. As it comes from Keating. He's barreled. Robson, Hayne, Hayne away to Morgan. Ryan Morgan will play it. Three metres out from the line. Parramatta denied at the moment. Can they crack it this time? Robson in for Manor. And Manor will play the ball. Again, eight metres away from the line. And again, Keating. He'll go left side. He does that. It goes along the line. It's picked up. Maguire, and he got a ball to Lozano. But he couldn't, uh, he couldn't do anything about it. Just take the tackle and hold the ball. This is the last. It's out to Maguire. There goes the kick. Ben Smith's there. So is Hayne. So is Moy Moy. Paramount score. Moy Moy scores. Brilliant piece of jumping by Hayne. And a lovely kick by Casey Maguire. Yeah, good stuff there from the Eels, finally taking advantage of their good field position and the pressure that they've been able to apply in these opening nine minutes. And Casey Maguire, deft little kick, Hayne flying high deliberately back into the path of Moy Moy, and he brushes through two to score. They're known as the Electric Eels. 
And there's been a few blackouts in 2011, but that was electric. It was absolutely spot on and hanging up above the pack. And then one of the most popular of all in this club, Moy Moy, gets the try. Here's a young man who debuted, I fancy, back in 99 against the Dragons. Landing the goal. Gives him 42 points in the last three games he's played. Not bad for a team coming down at number 12. Timmy Gilbert's on the sideline tonight. Hey, Rapsy, a huge game for him, isn't it? They're two points out of the eight, although they're 12. They win tonight, they get the bye next week, and they're pretty confident. I spoke to the coaching staff, one of the coaching staff, he said, look, they've been saying they're tired all week. Let's hope they are as we look at the try again on the uh, Kino replay. Well done, Fooey Fooey. I thought Jack Gibson said there's no such word in the dictionary as tired. Well, the Dragons have been behind on the scoreboard only twice this season, and only once have they been behind at full time. And that is only the second try scored against them, I think, Pete, in the first half hour of any game this year. And the only other time it's happened this season, Ray, was Ben Pomeroy back in round two. When the Sharks won that game, is a big collision from Moy Moy and Ye Dean Young. And then Young got a bit of help from Ben Cray coming in. And there could be no better injection for Parramatta than a try for this fellow Moy Moy at the 30 minute mark or should I say at the 30 meter mark it's played by Moy Moy and here's Manor running from the left side back onto the, the blind side of play Hunt working hard with Young and Pryor and now for a big kick off the right foot of Hay and again it looks easy for him but it goes a, a long long way down to Jason Nightingale out in the deep and he'll play the ball about 35 metres out from his own line. Playing it back to the purple and pale green boots. Underneath Darius Boyd, who didn't play in that match in round eight. Dragons versus Eels, when they won again 30 and nothing. In fact, their last two matches, they've won 30 and nothing, the Dragons. And in their last five matches, they put another result on the board, 37 mil. Now it's come to Hornby, Hornby goes away to Boyd, inside for Pryor, Pryor goes back towards Heimarsh, and he's tackled 35 metres out. Played then by Pryor in 13, he's played in the singles, and Wayman it is down the middle, and Ben Smith drags around the legs, this is the last for the, the red and whites, it's gone to the playmaker and kicker, Salad. High, down towards Jared, crossbar, crossbar came into it. It was always going to be a problem for Jared, but then it struck the crossbar and did the right thing by Parramatta. So Bird comes, uh, the, uh, the uh, ball comes back to the 20 metre line quickly. With Luke Bird taking it out of the 30. And he's high enough to the run now, out towards Gaznier. Moy Moy was 33 to 1 to be the first try scorer. And you can bet Ride and running on the football on one triple three nine zero on TAB Sportsbet, but gamble responsibly. Here is Robson firing it back for Maguire to go to Hayne. Something developing on the right, but they slid in defence, and it was Pryor who's working hard down that left side defence for the Dragons, shutting it down again. The kick goes down. And it's taken by Nightingale. Got a penalty here. Adam Cuthbertson taking out, or will have taken out Casey Maguire chasing through. Well, what do they do here? Do they take the well, two? The referee said Dan Hunt, but I'm sure you'll find it's Adam Cuthbertson. Oh, no, it's actually is. Yeah, I apologise. It's Dan Hunt who moves out of his way to his left, deliberately into the line, being run by Casey Maguire. Notice so, Parramatta with the ball. They're playing with a lot more width. They're open their attack. A lot of times they, they move the ball from sideline to sideline. We haven't seen that this year. But just on that, Joey, we, we spoke about the conditions. You've got to have the play finished before you get to, like, 10 metres in. Otherwise, you'll slide over if it gets happened. We've well, we seen Loco early in the game. And you get pushed over on the first play. And Jared Hayne then went dangerously close to being pushed over. I'll just slide this Toyota Cup score up for you. While Luke is preparing to add another two to his record. An awesome record. 16-10, the Eels won the Toyota Cup tonight. 16-10, to the Eels over the Dragons. And the Eels leading here with a 
Converted try and now penalty goal for Burt. That is successful. So Parramatta lead by 8 mil after 14 minutes. That's a rare scoreboard for the Dragons to look up and see. I know it's a nice scoreboard in their favour, Joe. Any temptation there at all to, to turn the two down and go for more? No, I, I think I like the two points. In these conditions, the slippery conditions, and I think that, pe that penalty showed the lack of discipline there by Dan Hunt. That's very um, Dragons like. The pressure does the teams. We'll see how they go coming from behind the Dragons. The salad's kick. Fielded by Robson. Moy Moy went back with the first carry to the 20 metre line. Met by Ben Cray. Now Tim Manor. Dan Hunter's there. Ben Cray is there. And Paramount losing a lot of ground, even though in possession. That is strong defence. And Manor is clutching at the. The stomach area, Kyle Marsh now getting it outside the 20 metre line for the second time. Played back for Keating to take a dummy half scurry, I suppose. It's the surest way of making some headway against this defence. And it's gone away now to Maguire, who goes short off his left side to Lasalo. Lasalo actually playing left side as the second rower and putting out alongside Jacob Loco. And they they're very similar, but it comes down to Nightingale now. He's out to the 30 metre line, runs into Hindmarsh, who puts the clamp on him and puts him away. I think every time that Parramatta are kicking from inside their own half, the ball really has to go to Jared Hain. He's got an extra 10, 15, 20 metres on any other kicker in their lineup. Casey McGuire got a decent strike on that one, but Hain's got a huge boot, and, and you've got to take full advantage every time. Wayman then off a short run up. He'll play the ball on the halfway line and it's gone over to Sourd and now to Boyd in on the right side this time. He's taken down by Maguire, played and Gaznia gets away from Lasalo, takes it down towards Loco and he and Lasalo make the tackle, 35 away from the line. Sourd then, he keeps this one low and it's going down into the end goal. Perfectly weighted by Jamie Sourd. Jordan Atkins brings it back to the 10 metre line. So Atkins seems to have recovered from an injury very early in the game. Hayne is a pivot. Luke Burt with the ball. And you play it about 15 metres out from his line. 8 mil in favour of the Eels after 16 minutes of this game. And that is Lasala with the ball on his 20 metre line in front of the Eastern Michael Cronin stand. And this is Tim Manor. 25 out from his own line. It's gone to Robson, the more and more busy, isn't he? And here's big Ben Smith looking to break through off the ball for Moy Moy, but the Dragons, they seldom, they seldom give you that opportunity. Robson got a kick in, he was challenged, the referee looking at his touch here. Nothing doing there, so it's with Boyd, he showed it to Nightingale, and now he comes back and he's got Morgan hanging around his legs. So played then by Boyd inside the 20 metre line. Tom Devoe it is who takes it away. Tom Devoe taken by Maguire and Manor. Played for a run for Cuthbert's in there. And he's able to get a ball away. And then it's gone through Sarah to Wayman. And his head went jolting back as Moy Moy's left shoulder made contact. Cuthbert's in another example of his ability to off well. Here's Hunt. He gets down and drives with the legs as he builds up his speed to the halfway line young away for Hornby now Ben Smith chases him down together with Keating so now Boyd and to the short side young using his kicking skills it's gone straight down to Hayne Hayne though has to work out of the corner they pick him up and put him down 20 metres out from the Parramatta end of the ground well, it's Parramatta go two passes wide to Luke Burt Seeing that last set of six, Ben Hornby was trying to position. That was close to being a mistake from the play ball. Trying to position Darius Boyd back on his inside, but Ben Smith read the play and closed it down quickly. It was interesting just there. Yeah, his man are making a knock on of it. So the scrum will go down about 30 metres out. Mark Gaznia came in very quickly off the right side defence. Here guys, <laughs> back here. Nathan's, Nathan's look. It, it had a look of, I'll call it dismay, as he looked at Tim Manor. The NRL are dedicating round 13 to 
call to arms and raising awareness and money for research, prevention and support for men affected by cancer. Tonight, the Eels and Dragons are answering the call by wearing yellow armbands, you may have noticed. For more information or to donate, go to calltoarms.com.au. Pryor is with it. He's had a, a busy start. Matt Pryor has been expected to do quite a bit of work, particularly in defence. Wayman plays it on the 20 metre line. The running to the northern end here, Sarge with the ball. And he's held by Mana and Lasalo and looking for the legs is Keating. And uh, that's a surefire way of getting him to the ground. He's young going out. He used the detroit from Wayman. The ball has gone back to Cray. And Ben will play it right in front of the upright. Ten metres out. Played back for Young, and he goes to Dan Hunt, and Hunt is tackled by Keating. The try line is only a matter of a metre away, and it's gone to Wayman, but they meet him. They meet him right on the ad line there. Moy Moy and Smith, and it's a turnover. Right, so it's good Tim, on line defence. You support, you support right The first time they've been tested. And that's what shows coming from behind. This is George Illawarra Dragons. Normally, Jamie Howard get the ball in the last play and put some pressure on with his kick to get a repeat set there running the ball in the last you, you never see that from the dragon With a good scurry again by keating he's made a few runs from dummy half now matthew and they've all been valuable as he goes away for robson to turn it into shackleton who's out there now in jumper 15 from shackleton way behind marsh on now to mcguire mcguire taken by Bo Scott. And I notice that Mitchell Allgood is about to come into the game for Parramatta as well. Here's a little kick by Robson. Hain is chasing, so is Bert Soward. Then felt the rock of their defence as they charged down on him. Bert can't get away because his legs wedged in there under Soward. Now Cuthbertson getting the ball away. Young is with it, runs into Hain Marsh. Again, there's no need to chip kick there. It was never on. Uh, they're, they're going well, Parramatta. You just drive the ball down onto the St. George Illawarra line and try and force a mistake. And that was trying to create something out of nothing, and there's nothing doing. There's Darius Boyd now. It'll be the fourth tackle. Tim Manor going back up the sheds. He got, he got nailed earlier in this game, and he not quite recovered from that. Scott. So, Bo. and gone on to replace Dan Hunt. He's gone on to that left foot of Salad. He's gone high. A tough one for Atkins. Came off the Dragons. Went back. Play on. It's with Salad. He puts in a beautiful little kick. Over to the middle. Pressure for Hindmarsh. And it'll be line drop out. But it was uh, it was good work by Hindmarsh to even be in position to, to shut that down and defuse it. But again, Joey, all of this pressure now comes back on the back of, of a chip kick centre field. Exactly, giving up field position. You're in front by eight. You kick the ball to the corners and, and let St George Illawarra trying to bring the game to you. You play from in front. That's a great kick from Jamie Howard, but look who's there. He's always there, Nathan Heimer. So the dropout from Luke Burke. Not one of his better. And this is Green. In 14 for the St. George Illawarra Dragons. And shortly they go back for the first time this year to win stadium at Wollongong. I think that match is against Manly in a few weeks' time. Yeah, round 16 down there, right? Played then by Merrin. And it's a long ball for Hornby. Short for Clay. Short for Boyd. Boyd with Atkins, he's, he's beaten Atkins really, but coming in is Robson to complete the tackle. All good has gone on, Moemo has come away from the field, and Tom Gouvet takes it away from this touchline area, into the middle of the ground, he's, he's parted company with his trousers for a moment, oh then Sauber, God. little kick, here comes Gasly up, and it's come down for Cuthbertson! <laughs> Cuthbertson thinks he scored a try! Referee Klein wants to look sure at it. St. George player didn't touch the I ball. I was watching Gaznier. I thought he was the one that was going to get the kick. He, he looks to have had an air swing, and Cuthbertson is onside, I fancy. Well, that's who Jamie Soud was aiming for. We've seen it on a number of occasions this year, that 
deft little kick over the top into the path of Mark Gaznia. A little bit of space to, to aim for. He's got a precision kick, does Jamie Sowd. They did quite well to, to shepherd Mark Gaznia off the ball. Video ref just having a look to see whether Mark Gaznia got a touch with that left hand and it went forward, but it seemed okay and bounced up beautifully, beautifully for Cuthbertson. And acrobatics at the end of it. It's a nice somersault. <laughs> All looked okay. Get a close look now. The left hand and look. I think even if he got a touch, it, it, it was going back anyway. Adam Cuthbert's in the former Sea Eagle and Shark. That's his ninth try for my money. It's a try. And Joey, he mightn't have been able to do that somersault a couple of years ago. So much as he shed what a bounce. weight. It's eight four in favour of Parramatta now. There's a kick to come. A kick to come for Jamie Soward. Adam Cuthbertson, his ninth career try. He's having a wonderful season. A resurgence for him under Steve Price and Wayne Bennett. And just a few seconds ago, Jamie Sowell converted that man's try, Adam Cuthbertson. So Paramount again, 8 6 in front. And this game goes past the 25 minute mark, and green it is that brings it back for Shackleton and all good to make the tackle. And Young goes away for Trent Merrin, and Merrin is held in uh, a four-man Parramatta tackle. Tackled and got involved with Keating, Hindmarsh, and all good. And now Crowley straight ahead to the 30-metre line. And so it's back now for Young, and he goes down to Saad, and Saad looked at Bo Scott, then decided to do a bit of running himself, a bit of stepping, but it took him back to where the ball was played. Tackle by Smith, given by Young, down to Green, and Green will play the ball. That's where they are, just a few metres on their own side of halfway. The St. George Illaway Providence down by two points, and Sauer puts a kick down. It skids across the ground, and taken on the feet by Hain. And Hain goes back to be met again by a familiar reception committee, including Pryor and Tom Gavay on this occasion. Then it's gone through Atkins and gone on to Robson and now it's away to Burton. He tries to circle the, the enemy, but Green makes the tackle. Atkins has a run and they're valuable metres coming out for his 20 metre line. So it's come away for Shackles and now and oh gee, that was a strong tackle by Ben Cray. Right on the 40 metre line, Parramatta will just stay with this and then we'll get an update on to Manor. Here's a break! It's been made by Robson, the halfback. He's down to the 20. He gets it away. Maguire was there, and Maguire couldn't get a ball inside because I think it was Jasnia put himself in the right place. Here's a penalty to Parramatta now. Relax. Relax. He had to roll out of the ruck area. Didn't clear. Yeah, interference in the play. The ball there. The Parramatta you players the are you have to clear the ruck aiming it's a professional the foul. The referees are having no concerns along those lines. Jeff Robson straight through. He had support on his inside. Hain went outside to Luke Burt. And they keep the attack bubbling. So Robson again. That's all good. And they're inside the 10 metre line. Centre of the ground. Parramatta by two. 26 minutes gone. Keating is Robson. Now Smith. And ben Smith to play the ball that close to the line. Played again for Keating. Shackle to the decoy. Through Robson, away to Maguire. Maguire on now to Lasalo, taken by Gaznia and dragged down. Nine metres out from the line, back for Loco, across to Maguire, out to Robson, now to Hindmarsh, and Hindmarsh upright in the tackle at the moment, but not now as he's put down under the combined weight there of Merrin and Green. And it comes from Keating and goes to Robson, who, who just lays it back for Ben Smith. And that's five gone for Parramatta. A two-point lead. 
and it's come away behind Shackleton, gone to Hain. He puts a kick high, they fly. It came off a dragon, it went to ground. Parramatta's got a try. Parramatta's got Lasalo over for a try. And Ashley Klein points to the spot. No inquiry of Sean Hampstead. 12 6 Parramatta. And it shows the importance of the kicking game. Really, Parramatta, that set wasn't going anywhere. And then Jared Haynes stood up and a beautiful kick to the corner. They get men at the ball. Lokab goes up. Nightingale fumbles and Lasalo's on the spot. He shows the kicking game. Three tries tonight, all off kicks. Welcome to our Rugby League Network's taking the telecast tonight. There is the try scorer, Tamila Lasalo. He's held that second row jumper. And some big names on the sidelines. And there he is, the try scorer. He was born in Westmead. He's only 21. Well, remember that moment. First try in the NRL. He's one of just four players for Parramatta that have played every game. Alongside Luke Burt, Jeff Robson and Nathan Heimar. So he's made quite an impression in a short period of time with the coach Stephen Kearney. He played in Tonga's World Cup squad back in 2008. I shouldn't say he played. He didn't play, but he was a member of it. Now here's Burt and straight as an arrow. He's got a career percentage success rate of 77. Luke Burt, Tim Gilbert sideline. Oh, don't you love him? Everyone loves Luke Burt. Now, just on Tim Manor, it's a re-injure of a rib cartilage problem. I'll have a look at half-time to see whether he'll come back. Stay behind! stirred up an old problem, Tim. And I'll tell you what, rib cartilages, they are, they are awful things to be able to get rid of. He's got a fitness test coming up in the next few days. Might be a concern there as all of brings it back with some energy. Gets pushed sideways by three Dragon defenders. Working on the lower back of Moy Moy. As Shackleton brings it out beyond the 20 metre line, playing it for Keating to spin it away to McGrath. And McGrath's been good. Loco will be, have to be careful over there. He's, he's flirting with that sideline, and Gaznia would love just to throw him into touch, particularly down this end of the ground. Here's Hain coming in. No look from Hain. Smith is with the ball. Big fend on Hornby. Takes on Tonga Bay. Tonga Bay and Hornby wrap him up, get the job done on the halfway line. This is Morgan. Hasn't had a lot of work to do, Ryan. It's been more on the other side, Jacob Loco's side of the ground. Good to attack, and here is the kick off the beat of Robson that should go dead. Sunday football coming to you from A and Z on Sunday. Rabbitohs up against Storm. The return of Greg Inglis against his old club. Four o'clock, you see the telecast on Sunday from A and Z, the big house. We go down there. There's a bit of a hit that Bo Champion might be back for the Melbourne side, so he'd be up against his old club as well as Bo Scott. Takes the ball forward into the final ten minutes of this first half. Nathan Fee now there now. And Green <clears throat> slipping and falling. Dean Young stays on the ground as he normally does. And Trent Merrin it is who's put to ground. 14 to six. Well, the Dragons, I told you earlier, they've only been behind on the scoreboard twice. And here is a ball bouncing away for Nightingale and a good save by Loco. He put an ankle tap on him, Burt made the tackle complete. Soward puts a kick in, it's high. A test for Jared, no test for Jared. He went up, there wasn't a, conte a, a contest upstairs, and Soward it was that made the tackle eventually. Is the ball, was Robson. You know, you mentioned the, the dewy conditions out there. Gee, the completion rate is, is remarkable. 14 from 15 for Parramatta, 10 from 11 from the Dragons, so just one error apiece. And the penalty count, not good for the Dragons, they trail 3-0, yet to receive one. 
Eight point margin in favor of Parramatta. Shackleton. Six of the last seven meetings have been won by the Dragons. And of course, the one they lost was the important one in 09. And that kick from Hayne is long down to Nightingale. That's what Peter's talking about. If they're going to kick long, they should have Hayne in position to get that job carried out properly. There's probably 10 more metres off that boot of his. And here's Gaznier, and he's taken by Smith. Matt Cooper out of this Dragons team after thinking under one surgery yesterday or today, and Pryor knocks on. So Parramatta will get another attacking opportunity with about seven minutes of the first half to go, and the Blue and Gold Army, I mentioned earlier, it might have diminished a little bit. There's the knock on. You can, you can hear their, their vocals rising out of the grandstands here. Here they are, a bunch of them anyway. 12th on the competition ladder. And there's a lot of teams this weekend, really, that are on, on the precipice. Making the eight from down around 12th. 12 and down. You've really got a job in front of you. This is round 13. This is Loco. Just beat Gaznia there. Taken by Salad. It's with Burke. And the old timer there. Trying to fend away and make a little opening for himself. He's so dangerous, Bert. And now the ball is played outside the 30 meter line. Here's McGuire. I like what he's doing. This combination is good. Shackleton. Shackleton will play the ball. Just that little chip from Robson. As Peter and Joe have pointed out, that doesn't help. And here's Hayne now. And Hayne spins away. Goes out towards Bo Scott and Nathan Feen. And Feen. And Scott, they make the tackle with some help from Dean Young. But he plays the ball, Hayne, middle of the ground, 20 away, now they're 15 away. It's put in behind Tom Gervais, and he makes it dead with Atkins coming down on top of him. Okay, I've been critical of a couple of kicks from Jeff Robson tonight. Not that one. That was a beauty. Going to the line, that brought the defence up. Tom Gervais turned quickly. Jordan Atkins, he was right on his hammer. And the pressure's maintained. It's... That's good stuff coming into half time. Jamie, behind the line. Not let's in stay front. Behind. Remaining. Keep behind it. Right on, let's go. Jared Sutton. Keep behind Jason. Behind the line, Jamie. Ministering rules down there for the line dropout for Jamie Sad. And it's gone down and it's off the feet here of all good. And that rolling ball and the rugby league ball doing as it did. Parramatta are going to play the ball on the first tackle. Only five metres into Dragon's territory. Moy Moy has been brought back by Kearney. For the last few minutes of this first half, he got his, his number one forward. A strike forward into the action again. 28 away. Back into the half. If there's a bit of vulnerability, this is where you're going to find it. And here's Maguire going to Loco. And Loco... You probably have memories of that clash with Gaznier in round eight. Tonight it's been pretty good for him. Gone through the halves. It's Wiz Robson, in fact. Hayne comes in, bullets it away to Morgan. Morgan puts it out the back there, and it's taken by Atkins. And they'll try and put him into touch, but they don't succeed. Done well there. So it's five tackles gone. Spun away now to the seven, Robson. The kick's at the upright. There's the leap. Down it comes. Paramatters in again. Are oh, they in again? On the last tackle. It's Casey McGuire. Just want to make if sure that comes off Mark Gaznier and not a nail. Well, this ball in the air is not favouring the Dragons, so it appears. Well, it's a reflection of the kick, making it a, a lottery, turning it into a 50-50, and the referee out there is inquiring here as to whether it touches Mark Gaznier. The chases are fine. Well directed, comes down next to the post. Gazny gets a charge. I actually think it comes off Luke Burt. I think it may well be a, a knock on. You see Burt on the far side. He touches it there, I think, onto the arm of Mark Gazny. It may well have come off Gazny first, but I think Burt second. I well, tend to think you're right, Peter. I think Luke has got a touch on this. And the 
goes forward off that. And Maguire, doesn't matter where he is, the ball has gone forward off the hand of, of Luke Burt for mine. And Sean Hampstead, I think will turn this down. Yes, he does. Yeah, he goes forward to the He's still going forward. Where he touches the book, he's going forward. Sending him back to the 20 metre line. So it's a breach in goal by the attack. And there's the kick again on replay. Nothing wrong with the kick, Joe. Well, it goes to show the dewy conditions, Rabs. So hard to score points and play around teams. All the tries off kicks tonight. You said in your preview with Peter that the dew on the ground, you gave Parramatta some hope. Yeah, well, the noise is coming out of St. George of the are tired and players backing up. You know, the build-up wasn't the way they like. And Parramatta, they're always hard to boot here. They're always giving them hope. There's Matty Pryor on the ball on metre. Parramatta side of halfway. And then Young got it away, and that's Merrin with the ball. St. Merrin, what a year. What a meteoric rise it's been for him. He goes on to Sard's left boot and he's gone for a midfield bomb. It'll come down maybe tomorrow. Battered down by the Dragons. Highmarsh has got the ball. So it'll be play on for Parramatta. And a penalty for the... Yeah, for the for the tacklers. Hanging on long after he had been called held. Nathan Feen... So much unlike the St. George of the Warwick Dragons. Normally they're discipline is, is first class tonight. Penalties 4 0 to, to Parramatta. So Parramatta is more and more bringing it up towards halfway. There's a little over two minutes to go. Actually, Klein, you saw him close up and listen to what he was saying, and he, he's, he's very respectful to the players. And I think that is returned to him as well. He, of course, spent a lot of time in Britain. He was their number one referee. His Hayne coming in, he got it away to Morgan, and Morgan tried to twist out of the tackle of Hornby. This is the time to spread the board, you would think. It's gone from Robson. Oh, Casey McGuire. <laughs> That's a Mark Taylor catch. Now it's come away for Moy Moy, and that's where it sort of breaks down. The ball needed to be given plenty of flight, plenty of hands. As it comes across to Hayne again now, he throws the dummy, he tries to spin away from Ben Crow. But Crow puts him away on five. So it'll be the kick again, you would think, of Robson. They go to him, the seven, he does it, yes he does, he puts a grubber in. Boyd's got it covered, and Boyd gets it back into the field of play. Robson mixing it up. A couple of his kicks have been questioned by our number sevens in the commentary. And I'm not going to argue with them, but some of his kicks also have been very, very good. What he's done with the ball wraps have been really impressed, Jeff Robson. He's organised the side. And, it, and they've opened their attack up, Parramatta, tonight, playing with a lot more wit. And the way he's linked with Casey Maguire and Jared Hayne, he's organised the side well. Played on the 30-metre line by Pryor. Dean Young is with the ball. And they've only got about 40 seconds of this half remaining, the Dragons. So it will be a miracle if they can score. And Salad boots deep down into that north-eastern corner. And Burt is on his way back. So Parramatta will have last use of the ball. Uh, the pass was long to Hayne. The pass across now to Atkins. And he will play it back to Morgan. And there might be another couple of play the balls, but Parramatta with Morgan taken down. Now on the halfway line, well, are the Dragons heading for their second defeat? It's early days. Here's Moy Moy across to Hindmarsh. And the siren should sound when Nathan hits the ground. If our clock is right, and it is right. So that is the end of the first half, and it's been a most impressive half for Parramatta. There might have been some lethargy showing through from the Dragons. 14-6 is the score at halftime. All the tries off the off the bomb. Moy Moy won, Lasalo won, Cuthbertson for the Dragons. Peter Sterling and Andrew Johns will have a look at the first half action and their thoughts on that.
first stanza. All that comes up in the Toyota halftime. You're watching the Eels up against the Dragons, traditional rivals on the home of Rugby League, Nine's Wide World of Sports. Time, 12 from 14 for the Dragons, which, as the boys have said, that's an incredibly high completion. Penalties 4-0 in favour of Parramatta at halftime. And Parramatta start the second half, and it goes down to Merrin, who comes back, obviously, with a, a full head of steam, and he's met and forced back. Waiting for Carl Webb and Justin Hollow to come into the game, as is the case with Jack Bosden for the Dragon. Ball played inside the 30, and it's gone to Ben Hornby. Cray ran the deep Cray. Boyd joined in. Cray goes down the eastern touchline. Playing it right on the halfway line, Tongave gives it Hornby there. Behind Green to Feen and Feen away to Merrin and Merrin will play the ball. So Nathan Feen at dummy half. And Dean Young is running forward. And the Dragons have got it down to the 40 metre line with Green again. 40 metre line, Parameters in, a little kick by Salad, the bounce is important gone off the boot of the Dragons it landed with Hain that was a little bit of good fortune for Parramatta that could have developed for the Dragons quite easily this was Soward with a little kick see the bouncing ball it's all over the place Moy Moy thought he had it Hornby put a kick on it and it went straight to Jared Hain so again they get a little rub of the green now Lasala, a try at the 28th minute off the ball. Ball lost back to the Dragon. It's an error there by Lasala. It was a, it was a great front-on tackle by Nathan Feen on a much bigger man. Forced the ball free. As the Dragons go on the attack. That's where they are, just outside the 20 metre line. Feen getting it away from Young at first and second is Hornby. Cry decoy, Hawk. Boyd is with the ball. Boyd's still going and... See about the, the, the hand and the arm come out. He was looking for Tongave. Pulled it back in. Gone to Hornby. They come back to the other side of the ground quickly. Young Salad. Salad beats one. Gets it to Gaznia. Here's a problem for Parramatta. Gaznia towards the line. Is a metre short. And will play it back for Jason Nightingale. Goes back to Salad to get a kick in. Neatly. It came off Parramatta and uh, they've got the football. Ryan Morgan has fallen on it. Some of the Dragons were saying it was a knock-on. It's with the wing three quarter now, Jordan Atkins. Well, it did suspiciously look like a knock-on from the man who reclaimed it. Maybe a touch fortune there. What a move from Jamie Sowd on this side of the field in the previous set to beat Jacob Loco. He beat him on the outside before the ball arrived. Boyman. And Feen is there. Involved in the tackle on Moy Moy with Young and Merrin. That's away for Robson to Heinmars. And Heinmars had Ben Smith running off his right hip. He play the ball, Nathan. Just inside the 40 metre line. Back to Robson. Robson puts a kick in between fullback and winger. Bounces a couple of times away to Jason Nightingale. Runs towards his uh, fullback that is taken by Robson when they came to the 30 metre line. Nightingale playing it to Fien and Fien to Tongueve and Tongueve is taken by Morgan and Atkins on that right side defence for Parramatta. 40 metre line then. And here is Darius Boyd put away by Atkins again. He nearly lost that between his legs there. Darius Boyd is clean down the short side and offloads. Good offload. Bringing another phase a board for the Dragons, and Boyd will play it. Five metres on Parramatta's side of halfway. To Hornby now. Inside board, Young. Then back on the inside for Green to work up the middle. We'll play it back to Feen, and Feen goes to the short side. To Young, he puts a kick in. There's a charge down from Parramatta, picked up by Boyd. So, tackle count. I would imagine restarted. Trent Merrin is with the ball now. Just no percentage in charge downs. That was Ben Smith going through. 
Not, not when there's an attacking kick in that position. Formby this time. Salad now. Scott is with the ball. He stepped away from one tackle. He's now got it back to Gaznia. Gaznia has beaten one. Gaznia has got around Loco. And he's taken by Hayne, but he got the ball away. Scott is there. Major danger for Parramatta. And it's Fiend with the ball. Three metres out from the line. Not even that. Ball played back to Nightingale. Over, down and low for Salad. Then for Hornby. It came off Boyd. He batted it down. Knocked on by the Dragons. Picked up by the Eels. It's with Robson now. That's a beautiful Again, read. They repel them. Atkins brings it away. Yeah, it was that man, Atkins, who draws a penalty for the Paramount of Earls. It was a, a beautiful read in defence. It's the second one he's done tonight. You see the Boyd out the back. Forced the error there on, on Darius Boyd, Jordan Atkins. He done it in the first half a, a beautiful tackle on Boyd. It was a great read. What about the off lad from Mark Gaston? Jared Hayne came out with a great tackle high on him and he just slipped the ball away. Nobody knew he had, he'd got it away. Certainly the Paramount of Defence didn't realise until it was almost too late. Just have a look at this. Gaston gets away, steps back inside. Good tackle from Hayne up high. And then just a little one away. He's Hayne joining him now to his back line. And he's on the halfway line, middle of the ground. As it comes on to Maguire, and Maguire goes working back into the middle. He picks up Mitchell all good, and he'll play the ball. Eight metres on Dragon's side of halfway. As it goes to a running Moy Moy, and he runs into Dean Young, and Young picks him up, turns him over, and puts him on the ground. He hits the line with such such force. The collisions are big. It's going to Robson. Here's Ben Smith. And he'll play the ball. 20 metres out. Horro's gone on. Losalo's come off. It's out with Heinmarsh. He goes back to Hayne. He goes back to Maguire. It's gone to Loco. Salad's trying to wrap him up. He eventually succeeded with some help from Nightingale. Five gone for Parramatta. And Bird it was the dummy with the acting half roll and that'll be changeover. It's the last tackle. Hold it. Hold it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, wait that's the tackle that should... Put on the ball in the flat. You try on the fourth when you've got one up your sleeve. Again, they've scored their try tonight from kicks. If you're in that position, go there again. That's a dumb play unless it works. You've got to give a rap to the young centre. Still, um, Jacob Loco. Been impressive tonight, got in the outside of Jamie Sauer, then you see him skip to the outside. This is his favourite play. Gets the ball in the left arm, skips to the outside and fends away with his, his right hand. Maybe that's a bit harsh. I'm not calling it a gun at all, I'm just saying it's, it's a genius play if it comes off, but it's not a great play if it doesn't. He's feeding the Hornby, Hornby went for that. Outside, inside ball, it didn't come off. Parramatta blocked the middle, middle passage. Now it's gone away for Salad to kick big. Down to Hayne on the 20 metre line. He comes outside 30. Atkins was with him, but Hayne said, I'll take them on myself. And he'll play the ball inside the 40 metre line. And now it's gone away. And gone through the hands of Robson. It's gone out to Burt. And Burt does a little step off his left foot, which almost carried him into a. A, a hole, but Gaznia was there. He was horror with the ball now. Coming off the bench in this match tonight. He plays the ball and Keating shows it, gets it on. Robson away, Hayne into the play. Dummy to Smith on the inside, gave it out to Morgan. 32 metres out from the line. Tackled by Pryor. Robson now, Hindmarsh this time. All good running with him. Hindmarsh takes the tackle. Four tackles, five tackles now. Played by the captain to the right side. Robson away quickly to Hayne. Hayne puts a kick up with plenty of hang time. Tom DeVay is underneath it. And he takes it safely, but as Peter just said, it's worked for you twice, why not go there again? Now it's a good take from Tom DeVay, and he got some good cover in front as well, just to help him out as the starting front rowers come, to get, come back in for the Dragons, Wayman and Hunt. It's a strong surge there from Dean Young. Ten minutes of the second half, or we're in the tenth minute of the second half, with Pryor held and put down on the 30-metre line. Tim Manor back into the game, and it's gone to Dan Hunt, and Hunt 
They'll play the ball out on the 40 meter line. They're on their last tackle. Soured. A chance for 40 20, but he puts it down the middle, a middle corridor off the boot of Hayne. Hangs a hand out. Ball comes back safely to the chest, and then he tries to beat Tongavay on the outside, but he doesn't succeed. He plays a 28 out from his line. Atkins to Robson. Robson to Burke. Almost an unnecessary link there was Jordan Atkins, particularly down that end of the ground. But it's played now and it's come away from Robson and gone to Casey McGuire. And Gaznia keeps shutting down this right side defence for the Dragons. Here's Carl Webb taking it ahead. Just outside the 30 metre line. I think this is only his third appearance for Parramatta, the former Cowboy. Then Robson, now it's his... Timmy Manor, I'm not sure what the story is, but Tim Gilbert will find out. We thought he might have been gone for the evening. At the 40 metre line, it's away now for the kick again from Jeff Robson. And the rumour is strong here tonight that he's off to Cronulla. Robson, he finds the line on the eastern side. We'll take a break at 14-6. <laughs> Welcome back to Parramatta, we've got a real football match, a real confrontation in front of us here on Bundaberg Friday Night Football. The outsiders, the 50 to 1 premiership outsiders, Parramatta leading the 2 to 1 favourites, Dragons 14 and 6. And as I've done so often tonight, the Dragons work it out from their own end, this time through Wayman. And they'll put there by an outstanding kick from Jeff Robson, he picked up 50 metres, found touches. James out, stops, props, finds support in Hunt. Hunt eventually put away by Ben Smith and Carl Webb. And here's Hornby. And the groan from the crowd probably typifies the feeling of those of us in line with the pass. It, it looked fractionally forward. Last tackle then for the Dragons. Feed to Salad. Salad through the hands to Gaznia. Through the hands. Nightingale down the right side. Kicks. Hayne is in position. Brings it away from the 10. Crosses the 20. And he's met there by a three-man Dragon tackle. Interchanges six for both coaches. And then if he wins this game, it'll be 400th victory. And that in itself will be a record. So many coaches have not even coached 400 matches, let alone 400 wins. Tim, what's the story? Tim, what's the story on Tim? Yeah, on Tim Manor. Basically, they assessed him at uh, the break and they gave him a needle and he gave us a thumbs up as he ran past. Just clearing up something. We'll let him get back Keating to the Keating back to Manor. I'll catch you in a moment, Tim. He steps out of the tackle. He's taken it to the 40. He beats another. But you don't often beat Bo Scott. It's gone to Ben Smith. He shrugs away from another and they're 32 metres out. Robson calling for the ball. Morgan at dummy half, Robson through the hands, quickly to the left, now it's to Hayne, Hayne gets a ball away to Horrell, and he'll play it just inside the 40 metre line. Stay with me Tim, I'll come back to you in a moment, it's played there by Horrell, gone to the middle, Robson, right foot step, but he put, oh he might have been interfered with here, no the referee said I saw it, play on, it's gone to Loco, he loses the ball, Boyd has got the ball now for the Dragons and Boyd turns defence into attack but Gazny has got players all around him and he's put down inside the corner. Timmy Gilbert sideline. Yeah, sorry, Rose. Basically what I was going to say is that uh, thing that happened at the start of the game where Tim Manor gave that final address to the team, that's what Steve Kearney's trying to do. He's trying to bring some of these young guys through into leadership roles. That's what happened. This is Tom Gilbert. Played for Fiend. Fiend for Dan Hunt. Taken by the skipper. And here's Fiend again. Rolling both Scott down the blind side. Turned away, Fiend again involved, Wayman now. That ball might have come off Parramatta. Attempting to tackle, it'll be a knock-on against them, I think. The arm. 
The arm around, knock the pass. Attempting the tackle. Mason Parramatta the arm, knock the pass down. He's contacted by the arm, even though it's attempting the tackle and not playing at the ball. These days it's deemed as a knock on. Yeah, so I, I guess there was fingers there from Ben Smith. This is this is a good game. This is really developing now. The, the Dragons, you just know they'll play to the 80th. Seven O block weeknights. The block is back. Eight couples, four houses, five nights a week with more twists than, than ever before. The block 2011 coming soon on Channel 9. You're enjoying the Sterlo. That, that was the old NFL shotgun play. <laughs> Straight across field. It didn't quite work. Dan Hunt. Now Finn getting it across for Wayman. 35 metres up from his line. Wayman for Finn, then for Hornby. Hornby for Scott. Scott. He tried to unload and he got it back in. Heimar said he knocked on. But even though Nathan was trying to dob him in, he, he didn't get any reaction from the ref. It's gone away now for Fiend, and the ball goes to Cuthbertson right on the flat line. This is the last. Boyd is there. Puts a little kick in. Parramatta's in trouble. Tom Gavay, was oh, it a double yes. movement? No. Or was there a tackler involved at all? No. no. Tom Gavay scores. Wow. I'm sorry, I wow. apologize for that. Oh. That... That was magnificent from Penny Tongavay. A difficult task made look easy. The kick was a beauty on the ground, and Tongavay to keep control of this football and then the presence of mind to pick it up and put it over. It was beauty beautiful. Well done. You can do whatever you like with the ball when there's no tackler involved. We'll take a break and come back. Tonight, I believe, his second game for the Dragons. And that was a superb finish. Soward from two metres in. 14-10. The Premier's coming back. Soward from the sideline. And I think he's got it. Yes, he has. It got lost in the lights there for a moment. But the try score. Penny Tongava has had a, a mixed bag tonight, but this was this was all diamonds. All diamonds. Well the easy thing with that was to knock it on. But he kept control of it. Wasn't touched by anybody, and we've seen four tries now. Four from kicks. With a kickoff from Parramatta. Two points in front now. The worst thing they can do now is to try and cuddle, to cuddle a two-point lead. They've been going good, they've played some creative football, adventurous stuff. There's Hunt. Fiend to Cuthbertson, short and away to Hornby. I don't know whether Ben needed that. He got the ball from Cuthbertson and three monsters were waiting for him. Here's Cuthbertson with the ball. Got his ninth career try tonight in the first half. Off a kick that is meant for Gosnia. Here is Ben Cray, the second row. Five gone for the Dragons. They've made it back to halfway. Hornby will put them down in the corner. It's gone over the head of the winger Atkins. And so it'll come down for a scrum about 15 metres out from Parramatta's line. Here they come. Going into the final quarter of this game, the Dragons have had a lot more possession in this second half so far. Again, took a kick to break the Parramatta defence, but you can just see them 
starting to get a bit of more momentum in this second 40. There's the bench. Melbourne Green. 14% difference with the situation at halftime in possession. It's now down to 10%, and as that happens, you can see the scoreboard fluctuating accordingly. So Parramatta with Morgan the centre. Tackled on his own 20-metre line. Played back for Keating. Keating away then to Maguire. And now it's out to Loco. 12 metres out from his line. See, this is what they do. It's in Georgia the way. A kick from Hornby. Purposeful down. We'll set a scrum. Then we'll tackle them and hope to get the ball back down there into the ground. Not only tackle them, but keep them contained so that they're... They're kicking from deep in their own territory. And it was Red who had a run then. I mark things away. And this is really where they lift their intensity. In defence. They attack you with their defence. As it goes to Hayen. And he kicks off his 30 metre line. And certainly no, no comfort zone to be kicking off a point just inside the 40. They made him kick off his 30. And it was well orchestrated by Parramatta Ray because Jeff Robson was in the kicking position and Jared said, no, you get out of the way, I'll kick here. And when they're that deep in their own half, he is the man. You've got to get as far as you can. There's the Dragons now throwing the ball about and it goes to Soward who goes back to the left side. Ben Hornby is looking at Gaznia rather exasperated with his look at Gaznia and Scott. It was almost like he said, what's gone wrong there? What happened there? Played by Cray, Cuthbertson, Soward, Soward, Long, Lofted, Hornby, back, inside, Gaznia, up the middle. Held by Parramatta, couple of metres into their own half of play. Fiend puts a ball rolling, end on end. Hain will watch it go. And so we're going to see another scrum packed down with Parramatta's feed. Here's an update on the TAB odds, TAB sports bet. At halftime, Parramatta were $1.60 to win the game. They're out to $1.85. The Dragons were $2.25. They're out to $1.85. So it's $1.85 each of two. And one triple three nine zero is the TAB sports bet number. And again, gamble responsibly. Well, I'm not sure what price you put on a battle of wills, but that's what we have out there now. The Dragons, patience, kicking for field position. Let's get the heads in. Parramatta now got to match that. They'll get impatient. They'll take unnecessary risks. They set for set. They have the lead. Dragons are there to pounce if they come up with mistakes. Loco. He's inside his 20 metre line. Second half possession. Parramatta 52% of the time. That belies the information I just gave you earlier. This is Shackleton. He's back on his 20, and you can see it for yourself, and undoubtedly you've been watching it now for a matter of 12 weeks. Really shoulder arms. They compress in defence, and when you're coming out of your own end, you're lucky if you make it up to that red line. And invariably, you don't make it, and you make a mistake, and then they hurt you. Played by McGuire, little kick from Keating. Nightingale's real hurt. He's outside his 30 metre line, he's run at Hindmarsh, not a good practice, but there was no alternative. It was either Hindmarsh or Hollow, and they both took him to ground. So Fee, Salad, Salad, Gaznia, Gaznia on the short side. Was it a knock on? Yes, it was a knock on. Knocked on by the Dragons, Gaznia says, you're joking. Mate, you're in here, you can't see. Tim Gilbert sideline. Well, Rabs, I don't think it's saying too much that this next 17 minutes defines Parramatta seasons. They were so high on aspiration this year with a new coach, a new look, a new regime. They win tonight, they get the bye, they're in it, they lose, it becomes a real struggle. Well, I got you there, Tim. Jeff Robson, I just want to watch. Oh, Gasly lost it for sure. I mean, there might have been a hand, but there's got to be a thing called loose carry. Yeah, but it went backwards. The, the, the story on Robson, have you confirmed it? It looks like he's heading to the Sharks. I don't know whether Penn's gone to paper, but he won't be at Parramatta next year. Played by Morgan, now with Hindmarsh. And Hindmarsh, 35 away from the Dragons' line. Parramatta by two. 
Keating, Robson, Robson, Payne. Payne comes to Cray and Cray. A conventional tackle. Snaps him down. They're up towards 20. Shackleton's there now. He's inside 20. And Shackleton buckled over there. In a heavy from George Illawarra tackle. And uh, Bosden is out there now. It's gone to Hayne on the blind side. And again, they shut him down. Bosden with the, the very white clothes on, like former material. The kick across from Robson, taken by Gaznia. Gaznia bounced off the uprights, got it back to the 10. And Hindmarsh reins him in. Now it's gone to Bo Scott. He's out to the 20. Loco's there. Hindmarsh is there. And the Dragons now, with Hindmarsh tackling Fee. Ball went to Sowers. Back to Scott. Six more tackles is the call. They're out to the 30 metre line. Horro making that tackle. And Bo Scott. Now it's going to be Raymond. And Raymond is taken by Hindmarsh, who must have made four or five tackles in a row. And I might be exaggerating, but only by one, I would think. Wayman is with it now. How many has he made for the night, Pete? 47. Matt Keating in the next with 35. There's the Dragons kick down again for touch. Over, Jerry. Well done, mate. Well, this is what they do. This is what they do better than anybody. Stephen Kearney watches on. We'll take a break and come back. at uh, Parramatta and the Eels by two Hayne inside the 20 metre line Atkins and Atkins just beyond that point now and they, they drive him back the tackle according to the referee not completed as Keating gets it on and this is Ben Smith with the ball well, it is apparent for Parramatta is his support play Every time they get, you see many go forward. Luke Burt's there in his pocket. A lot more support tonight from the Parramatta Eels. Here's Robson turning the wheel. Shackleton up the middle. And on the 40 metre line. This is the last, so it's Hayne there for the kick. No, it's Robson. He's outside the 40 metre line as he puts it uh, down there on the full. It's gone out. Well, it wasn't hard for him to be inside the 40, but he chose not to be, and then he's taken an adventurous shot at the sideline. No, he didn't strike through the ball, he actually skewed it sideways. And there's the reaction, and rightly so. We are getting into the realms now of, of next try wins. At the moment, the Dragons do look more likely. It's Bosden. Just inside the 40 metre line. Fiend. More and more runs him down. So it's played 33 metres out. Here's Wayman up the middle. And Marsh and Moy Moy combined to stop the big fella. Fiend goes to the short side. Hornby goes to Cray. And Robson all over the top of him with Morgan. Penalty goes to the Dragons. After the tackle's being made, you use the body of the man tackled to leave yourself away. up. And the penalty goes shot. to the Dragons, and they're going to take the shot. Wow. Well, I think you do. It's 12 to go. And if Jamie Soward misses, it'll go dead. So they either get all square or they get the football back. And I think that they're coming home a little bit the stronger. He won't miss. They might well be saying we're not getting many of these things, these penalties. This is their first. With a chance for two, we might as well take it, even if it is a fairly acute angle. He's about eight metres in from that sideline. It's on a different tangent. One man out there needs to be careful. Tim Manor. He's getting a few instructions from the referee while well, he's off now. He's got a bit of a habit of walking off the mark when he's getting up to play the football. And he was penalised last week for not touching the ball with his foot as well. 
There's the assignment to Jamie Sauer, just right in front of you. Kicking down to the southern end. Brett Kenny end. Oh, what a kick. <laughs> what a kick. Just absolutely spot on. Never left the mark. Ten to go, and we are locked up at 14-14. Here it is again. Take a picture of that. That's lovely. If you're a Dragon supporter, you can take pictures and send them out as Christmas cards. Yeah, look at the concentration on his face. He kept the head down. Didn't come up too early on it, so he got right through it. And what a 10 minutes we've got coming up is Parramatta. Drive it down from the kickoff. Hornby finds Merrin. And they pick him up and unceremoniously put him down. Trent Merrin. Here's Bosden. He's lost it. For Parramatta. That's knocked on by Ben Smith. First one off Saints. No, he's ordered first one off Saints. So he's going to put a scrum down and give the feed to Parramatta. But what I was about to say, Parramatta have done what St George just have been doing for a couple of years now. Yeah, Fui Fui Moi Moi come out of the line. Look at that. Target the ball. No wonder the ball come loose. The massive big Fui hitting the ball. That's what you need off your, your big players, special moments like that. He scrunched him, right? Yeah, that was a scruncher. I'll take that back. So here's Parramatta with a chance. Oh, Loco picked up and put down by Soward. Gasney is away, got it back in field. It went past Soward, it went forward. He's and it's going to be a knock on against the Dragons now. Oh, Advantage is gone, mate. Advantage is gone. It's not gone. Oh, they want advantage. This is great. Lock on. Well, I don't think I can blame Jacob Loco here. It was the pass from Casey Maguire. Oh, well, he, he did have a, a good catch on it, but it was slow motion, and Loco didn't realise he had a player coming in in front of him. Goes back from Gaznia. Darius Boyd is there. The referee saying that was the knock on there. He nearly blew the whistle on a Jamie Soward offside, but there were two infringements previous, so he just went back to the knock on. The Dragons were calling for an advantage, and so the advantage had gone. Morgan is with the ball near the halfway, dragging Tom Gavay into the defence. Here's Ben Smith with a bumping run, keeping, keeping himself pretty, pretty late. He's lost the ball. And it's a, yes, it's a scrum. Ben Smith has lost the ball. Cole, you're too busy calling to the referee. Yeah, you're too busy calling for it. up. Hey, I'll stop right now. Smith saying, I was trying to get up, I was trying hey, to get up. He's too busy trying to crawl forward, not hold the ball. Let's go. He said you're trying to crawl forward, not hold the ball. Jamie Seattle has kicked four field goals this season. And they've won all of those games. Seven and a half minutes to go, just under. Well, here's their chance to work it down for probably his first attempt. Prior, middle of the ground. Now it's away for Bosden and he's tackled and put away. Seven metres into Parramatta's area, they're just going the shortcut. And you know what that is, straight down the middle. It doesn't really matter how far out they are either. It can boom one over from anywhere. Now they put it through the hands and prior. He keeps it alive with a pass to Boyd. And Fien is looking around, looking for Sowers. Well, he's Sowers pointing to the middle, and that's what they've done through there. It's not ideal. He would have preferred the play to be in this side of the post, but he's a long way back. He's back near the 40. Fien runs out and kicks. It's taken by Hay. In the meantime, Sowers was about 100 yards away, waiting for the ball. Like waiting on a train station and the train doesn't arrive. Was that a planned move, Joe? I don't know. I don't know what's gone on the last five minutes of this game. Both teams have been so disciplined with the ball. The last five minutes, they lost their head. Maguire is lobbing it back onto the chest of Horrell. <laughs> That's an interesting so, shot we yeah. have there. Can we get a close-up, please, Kevin Five. I don't think we'll go any closer. Do you mind? Shackleton's got the ball now. 35, 35 metres out from his own line. 
You're quite right. It's been riddled with, with errors the last 10 minutes. Ben Smith. Well, the pressure is exhibited on the scoreboard. 14 all. And Payne takes a shot from about 55 metres out. It bounces 18 times. Down to Nightingale, who's tackled by Heinemar. Yeah, but most importantly, the, the, the chase was poor on it. Everybody stood back and watched. And that allowed Jason Nightingale to pick up a lot of metres. With a, a Hail Mary kick, I suppose, is a good way to put it. Played by Gaznia on his own 40. The pass over the head of Bosden to Young. Moy Moy working tirelessly. He's made 26 tackles now. The big prop. Hornby off his left foot, stepping back into Moy Moy and Shackleton. Sowers back on halfway or inside his own half. Here he is, Sowers. Right on the halfway, puts a kick in, a stabbing kick, down into the corner again. And Hayne goes across, he's on his own line, comes back towards Salad, who makes the tackle together with the lock forward or the centre three quarter tonight, Matt Pryor. Morgan getting the ball away to Atkins. And Atkins is 15 out. The Parramatta with the grind in front of them, is getting it down the other end so that they might be the team that breaks the deadlock and he's ruled that he's lost it he's ruled against Casey Maguire and a scrum will almost certainly see the Dragons take the shot well, there's a hand there's a hand all right but he got away with it. Not early. Now, as Ray points out, you would think that Jamie Soward would just go in behind the scrum, a little bit to the left. He goes straight away still, it looks like it. Well, Greg Bird did the win one in Golden Point against the Raiders earlier this year, and he made it look easy. And here it is with Pryor. And Pryor, 15 metres out. Hornby to the middle of the ground for Merrin. So seen then to Dean Young, and that is the end of three. Where is he? He's right in front of the uprights. Here it comes. No, he's had to pass. Parramatta got up on him pretty quickly. Boyd across, Tongueve back, and Tongueve is taken down on the 20 metre line. Still, they're on the fourth tackle. It's come away for Bosden. And he'll play the ball. Now where is he? He's 32 metres out in the middle of the ground. Here he is. Oh, there goes the shot. Parramatta. And it's a Parramatta penalty against the man playing the ball, is it? Not strike. He has been facing touchline instead of straight ahead. Well, that's what well, I don't understand why they didn't take the field goal from the scrum win. We'll see the yeah, good call. That was a good call. The advantage in that department, Peter, is even more exemplified under the rules this year of binding. You, you scrum, it, it has to stay bound, otherwise you get a differential penalty again on top of it. Well, you're sort of having more distance between yeah. yourself and the defence than you're going to have at any other time in the next set. But it's a very good thing to do these days because the second rowers in the lock have got to stay bound. So they can't charge you down. And the other fellows have got to be five metres behind the last line of forward's feet. Well, so what's wrong with taking the drop goal from the scrum? Have a look at the replay there, Jack Boston. He, he was he was east-west, not north-south. So he was looking into the sun. Here's Morgan with the ball. On the 40-metre line. And it's, uh, it's a crazy game of football now. It's gone back to Shackleton, and Shackleton has taken down. <laughs> no matter, they've got to get this ball... A bit closer than this, or oh, not another one, no, they've passed it, and Hain juggles it, the ball goes to ground, it went backwards, it's picked up here by Lasalo. he drops it back to Burke, and on. there's a knock-on, knock-on knock on Hain. So the block. Dragons will come up with the ball so on a turnover. Don't want to whack it on his... Knock-on against Hain. Hit their bloke and then went backwards. So no way. Well, 
I suppose. It might be tip for tether. Here's a chance for Nightingale. <laughs> Moy Moy went up out of the line like a missile. Gaznia now. A run from dummy half. And again, they try to set Jamie Soward up. We've got 35 seconds to go. In regular time, Green will play the ball. Soward is waving his arms around like a traffic cop. It's gone out to Merrin now. And so we look at the clock and there's 20 seconds remaining. And here, here is the go. shot. Seen. The ball was played correctly. It's been a charge down from Parramatta. And it's come back down. It's with Hayne it was. Boyd is with the ball now. Boyd runs a circle. And it's the zero tackle. He gets the ball away. It's gone back to Nightingale. And he's put down the end of regular time. Thomas. The end of regular time. We're going into only the second golden point game of the year. Titans Raiders in round four. Well, Jared Hayne here did a great job to charge that down. And then after he's reclaimed it, he tries to offload, does he? <laughs> <laughs> he does. Uh, it's all or nothing. Well, we go into Golden Point, and I'm just trying to have a look at which side is in better condition or better nick going into this Golden Point period. I still think the Dragons have the better running as they've done in this second 40 minutes. May well be another error, and we've seen quite a few of them, key ones tonight. It's a huge advantage in Golden Point to kick off to start with. See, there's the other uh, argument too. Got the option to kick off or choose which way you want to run. We'll uh, run the same way. Okay, so you guys are going to kick off and you're going to go right to left. Okay. <laughs> As Five I said, it's a huge point. advantage. Ben Horby just brushed it. Come on, Ben, stick solid. Well, there is there is that argument, Joey, that if you've got the football, you, you've got the opportunity to score first. You've got a long way to go and do it. If you make two or you know, two decent busts or something, you might be in, in, in position. Corkscrews, if yeah. I can use that terminology. Right. So here's the start of extra time. First team to score points. Take it out. Round 13. Dragons and Eels. Green it is with the ball. And here's Merrin with the ball. And what Parramatta have to do is do very much a Dragons on them in defence. They've got to really attack them with their defence. Yeah, they've also got to make sure right, they don't give away a penalty. They've only given away one in the entire 80. Pray. The Dragons come away 35 metres off their own line on the fourth tackle. So it would seem pretty certain with Salad in the team with that boot of his, they're going to put this down into a corner. And he's going to kick from just inside the 40 metre line. Not worried about 40 20s, but reefing it as far as he could. Hayne didn't have really much time to make a decision there. He picked it up and brought it back, so they're 12 metres back into the field of play. Jared plays the ball, it comes away from Acton, and goes across to Burke. And Luke, not any gaining ground really, not substantial. Second tackle gone, third tackle gone, and they're at the 20 metre line. Dragons, by comparison, were out near the 40 metre line. Keating will play the ball on the 30 now. Four tackles gone for the Eels. And Wyatt, Moy Moy, shaping to pass rather than run. And he's just inside the 40. Hayne should be away to the right. He is. And here's the kick from Jared. Doesn't go for length. I, I think the, the fact is he had to kick urgently. The bounce is favourable. It came down to Lasalo. He flops it away to Morgan. Morgan gets it to Robson. Robson gets it away and Atkins gets a kick on it. That's fortuitous. It's gone down to the 10 metre line. Boyd picks it up, says to Nightingale, this is your ball. And Nightingale takes it outside the 20 metre line. Jason to play it. 25 metres out from his line. And his Tom DeVay got all. Tom DeVay found a blade of grass that tripped him. He'll play it 30 metres out from his line. Back to Fiend. Now to Bo Scott. And Moy Moy and Keating are there. Together with Horror. 
but they're at the 40 meter line again on the third tackle and here's green with the ball and he's up towards halfway fourth tackle there so they're going to finish up giving it to Parramatta where they want to give it to them very much deep in Parramatta's territory but again it was excellent work from Jamie Sow directing his players to where he wants them to go so that on this play he's exactly where he needs to be look at that kick compared to what we saw from Jared Hayne at the end of their set they were all over the place Jamie Sow played those four or five plays for his team there just for that result so the restart for Parramatta, if I can call it that, identical to the one we saw on their previous set. Jared Hayne bringing the ball out of his own end goal off the Jamie Sowell kick. And as Peter pointed out, he orchestrated the whole set to suit himself. And then he put the icing on. His manner with a run that is good. He's 38 metres out from his line, four gone for Parramatta. A cross now for Robson, then no more, now Hayne, he floats a torpedo out, finds a target in Burt, and Burt is taken down. Almost on the halfway line. Players on the western side of the ground. It's gone to Hayne, his kick, he's gone for another drop goal. My goodness, he has got some length about it. That had the length. It did have the length, you're quite right. I didn't imagine he had that sort of kick in him, but there it is. It's on its way. Look at the length, look at the height. It was satisfactory had it have had the line. And there's the anguish. How far out was that, Stella? Is that 55? I don't know. I just thought they kicked the lift. I think it was about 55. That prior. So some, some tough metres in close to the play, the ball. Nearly halfway through the first set. Jasmine in there. Just on the side of halfway. Coming up towards five minutes gone and extra time. Young. Now for Hornby. Hornby behind Perry. Bird is with the ball. 35 out. And this will be the last play in the, the first. Gonna have a go, Howard. Here is Hornby taking the shot. And it has not got the height nor the direction. And the ball goes dead. So the people will sound and they will turn them around for the second five-minute session. Second golden point game of the year. This is the Hayne attempt. Where was he? Joey asked the question. He was 58 metres away from the crossbar. You hear stories about people in the 50s kicking goals from 60 out and that. I wouldn't have believed if someone said Jared Hayne kicked the field goal from 58. You wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. Wow. Not without wind assistance, that's for sure. <laughs> I know Benji. There's two steps. Benji's done it more recently that in a situation like we're in tonight, my mind goes back to a kid called Andrew Willis down at Campbelltown one night. I haven't seen a longer drop goal to win a game than that. So Jared Hay, 57 metre drop kick and missing its mark by only a couple of metres. And Tim sideline that the crowd have got their money's worth tonight and been very, very vocal and are still finding voice. And it's a great atmosphere, Pete. It's got that semi-final feel and, and a really good crowd as well. That field goal you mentioned, Rabs, about 53 metres from Benji against the Warriors at Campbelltown last year. 64 tackles made by Nathan Heinmark. 64 by the captain. As it goes to Tim Manor, and Manor is able to make valuable meters. And I emphasize valuable in view of the fact they're playing against this Dragons team, and Keating got a ball off to Maguire. Great tackle, Soward. It was, and here is Hayne taken by Soward. Referee says it was okay. And played by Hain. You might call it a wasted play. Robson for Moimoy. Moimoy running it at prime. 40 metres away from the line. They have got another shot for Burt to take this time. It hasn't got the, the length. And it's taken in the goal mouth by Boyd. And Boyd comes running back and he'll reach the 20 metre line on tackle one. 
tackle made by Ben Smith. Played to Young, and now Tonga there. Tries to burrow through the forward to the third and end of Penny Tonga though, who got a try for the Dragons at the 47th minute. And that was basically the all, there, all there was to the second half of, as far as points are concerned, as far as tries are concerned. Played by Scott, now it's with Hunt. Ankle tapping tackle by Loco. They're setting it up though. Here's the last. They've gone to him. There's Soward. And it's not a good kick. It's an awful kick by his standards. It's down to Burt. Knocks it back the first time. Brings it out to the 10. Tries to cut through. It's actually not a bad result if you're kicking for field position. Davis out is Jared Hain. Second tackle outside his own 20. Jordan Atkins with only half, and Dan Hunt moves quickly out of market to make the tackle. Now it's with Vasalo, and Vasalo is tackled inside the 40 meter line. Fourth tackle gone against the Eels. We're in the second session of extra time, and Manor it is who plays the ball for the kick of Robson. He aims it down towards the, the goal line area, and here's Tongavay coming up his own line. Where's the chase? Where's the chase? Hamash leading the chase, but he's still got it out to the 20. Admittedly, they're tired as we come pretty close to the 90th minute of the game. Here is Fien, taken by Moimoy. He's racked up 38 tackles in the game. Fien away for Quay. And 38 tackles for Fui Fui Moimoy is, is about 60 odd for Nathan Hindmarsh. And here's Hunt putting himself into the defence line, strong to the halfway line. 14 all, 88 minutes of the game gone. Hornby away, Boyd on, Tonga Bay, Tonga Bay, Morgan's got him. Oh, tackle. Put him into touch with a good shot. Good shot. The blue and gold people, it's their turn to rejoice. Well, the crowd loving this, and they've only got another minute and a half of it. As Ryan Morgan putting his body on the line there. Nice little play by the Dragons to find some space down the left-hand side. Nerves. Nerves, son. And Parramatta, 70 metres now to get in a position to win this. It may be a, a try that the opposition aren't expecting, or a field goal to win it. So here we go. Will the Dragons get another use of the football? Highly problematical. Robson for Hayne. Hayne for Smith, and Smith taken by Cray. Up near the halfway line, third tackle gone. That's the way. Moy, Moy, Moy to the 40 metre line. Dragons in. Four tackles gone. They come now to Robson, then to Hayne, then away to Ben Smith, and he's on the 30 metre line. So five tackles gone, and a matter of seconds remaining. Over to the middle, Luke Burt, who puts a kick in, but it's gone skewing away down towards the dead ball line. And it will come out to the 20 metre line for the restart. Possibly. What an entertaining game this has been. <laughs> is this? This. That's it. Man. Just about everything. Well, they've done it. They've almost done a Cronulla on the defending premiers. Almost done a Cronulla. They've pulled out of this with a point. Team number 12, the Parramatta Eels, very much the underdog. In their last seven meetings, the Dragons have beaten them six times. In fact, they haven't beaten the Dragons here at their own stadium, Parramatta, since 2007. They haven't beaten them tonight, but they, they didn't lose to them either. It's a 14-all draw at the end of Golden Point time. Last draw was 2009, from memory, Panthers versus Warriors.
<laughs> Thank you, David Middleton. You weren't taking your fish good oil. Memory. Good memory of that fish oil. Come on, come on. Uh, good preparation. How could you forget that? Tim Gilbert down in the uh, down in the middle. Yes, Tim. Yeah, Rabs. Well, we saw Benji kick that field goal. It was against the Titans, not the Warriors at Campbelltown. 57 metres. If it was straight, you had the distance. Yeah, I know. Um, now I'll get the ball, so you know, I just back myself and um, oh, I was filthy. You know, it, it, it's hard to hit them from long range, so. Before the guy left and just missed was um you know, disappointing. Have you ever kicked one like that in practice? Um, oh, sometimes it's just just mucking around. There's not as much pressure, not as much people watching you. Know? Well, talking about pressure, talking about people talking about you, state of origin all this week. Do you feel like you've done enough? You had a good game tonight. Yeah, you, you know, you know, um, um, you know, it's just to make the first one. So you know, there's nothing I can do other than play like I did tonight and, and play footy and you know do what I. I love doing so, um, as long as I'm enjoying myself and you know, loving my work, that's all I can worry about. You're pretty keen to be there. Yeah, of course, you know, it's always a pleasure to put the Blues jersey on and, um, you know, if I get the call up, it'll be, um, you know, obviously very good, but if not, it doesn't happen. All the best with Jared. Cheers, mate, thanks. Yeah, Jared Hayne there with Tim Gilbert and uh, obviously aching to pick up that blue jumper. Time will tell.